Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at one of the most important skills in lead climbing, how to find rests. Resting in the middle of a route is where sport climbing and bouldering differ. When we boulder, we can go full throttle and empty that gas tank for those 10 moves or less. On a sport climb, there are around 40 moves, which makes it very difficult to get from bottom to top in one continuous push. This means that we have to utilize pace and constantly monitor our energy. To demonstrate how to do this, I'll be climbing the orange route you see here. It's a combination of vertical and steep climbing with a fun roof traverse. The grade is 512B. There are 40 moves and 9 clips, including the anchor. Alright, let's get started. There's a saying that a change is as good as a rest. I found that gym climbs typically have a good rest right around the point where it transitions from one style to another. Here the route is changing from a ret climbing into face climbing, and at the point of transition there are two really good side pulls. Even though this is still really early into the climb, I'll take a moment to chalk up and prepare myself for the next section. Now we're entering the dihedral, or corner, section of the climb. Dihedrals oftentimes can be a treasure trove for rests because the angle of the opposing walls make for natural stemming on the feet. Here for rest number two, I'm utilizing a back step on my left foot and inside edge on my right foot to generate lateral pressure against the footholds. The back step allows me to have my left hip in, which pushes my center of gravity closer to the wall and offsets the steepness of the wall. The handhold is angled diagonally, so I position my body to the left in order to use it as a side pull. It's really important to take note of everything that's going on in this rest position. Feet are stemmed out to fully utilize the angle of the dihedral. Hip is in to counteract the steepness of the wall body is positioned for the hand to best use the handhold. You want to leverage as many factors as you can so that you can get the most out of your rest. A common mistake people make is trying to clip in the middle of the crux. This often results in a lot of panic and wasted energy and is accompanied by a take or fall. What you should know is that salvation lies just beyond the crux. If you make one or two more moves, you'll find that bomber hold where you can take that thank god rest. Here, shortly after the crux, I come to the best handhold on the entire route. As a bonus, I also have a huge hold I can use to heel hook. Both hands are matched and one foot is securely notched. It doesn't get much better than this. If you're severely pumped, use this opportunity to get back as much as you can. Well, the hard work is done. Now you just have to stay focused. I usually like to take a moment to compose myself upon entering the head wall, or final section of the climb. If the root setters at your gym are nice, they'll include one decent hole that you can use for a mini rest before making the final push. Here, just a few moves into the head wall, I find a nice side pull crimp to pause on while I chalk up and take in the final sequence of the climb. This also follows the whole a change is as good as a rest concept that was covered earlier in rest 1. Okay. I'm a, I like fucked up the last sequence. Thanks. Uh, Okay. <laughs> 
That's going, that's still recording, that's going in there.